Hey everyone, welcome to Stella Diaz chapters 15 and 16. When you read, make sure you're taking notes and paying attention to everything that's happening. When I get home from camp, I immediately call Jenny. I want to see if she wants to help make more posters. But her mom answers instead. Hi, Stella. Jenny is busy. She's rehearsing for her recital. I frown. Oh, okay, I reply. Can you tell her I called? It's a little upsetting. I know Jenny cares less about saving the oceans than I do. This is what we talked about in class today. Do you think that, you know, Stella is being a good friend or Jenny's being a good friend right now? Hmm. She spent most of our last session reading the baking book from the library. It made me a little mad. She's also busy, and it's okay if we have differences. At least that's what I tell myself. Part of being a crusader is being flexible to obstacles. I have to be adaptable, just like the tuna fish. Not only are they the only warm-blooded fish, they can raise their body temperature to adjust to colder water to stay warm. Mom's busy, so I decide to look for Nick in his room to help. Unfortunately, it's empty. I remember he is at the pizza shop. He is working extra all week because I am at camp. With no one to help me, I decide to read more about how we are polluting the oceans. The information is sad again. For instance, I read that the sea turtles will often confuse plastic bags with sea jellies, which they like to eat. So they end up eating the plastic bags by accident. I picture the baby sea turtles I just saw in Mexico. My heart breaks. Those poor guys. The worst part I read is that even if everyone recycles, we're still using more and more plastic, much more than we recycle. The plastic is showing up on islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean where people don't even live, and the animals there are suffering from it. While I read this depressing information, Linda comes over. Mom promised her dinner since she took care of Poncho during our trip to Mexico. Linda sits in my favorite chair and knits as Mom cooks. She watches me push the books aside and curl up in a ball. Well, I've never seen you react like this, she explained. Only my grandson, Joey, reacts like this, and he doesn't like to read. Yet. Part of me wants to smile, but I can't. What's the matter, Stella? It's the oceans. They're dying. I flop dramatically on my back. Oh, she says, dropping her knitting needles. It really is sad, isn't it? I look up at her face. She looks sincere. Biscuit runs across the top of my stomach. He sits down and nuzzles his face against mine. It's almost as if he knew I needed a friend. Linda slowly gets off the chair and sits closer to me. But you know what is amazing? I shake my head no. Oh, look. There's Stella, all sad. And there's Linda. Is that you care so much? I shrug. I know it doesn't sound helpful right now. But I know that you're going to make a difference. And if you can get more people to help, you'll make a bigger change. I sit on my elbows. She has a point. Why don't you write Stanley an email? I'm sure your mom won't mind just one more. After all, maybe you can make a whole list of questions to ask your camp counselors tomorrow. I sit all the way up. Biscuit barks as if he was motivating me. I get mom to turn on the computer. Linda, Linda knits nearby as I email Stanley. Dear Stanley, I'm super bummed. Saving the ocean is hard. It turns out there is so much more plastic and it's only getting worse. I don't know what to do. I have made some posters. Jenny helped some, but she's busy with dance camp, so I'm sort of on my own. Your sad friend, Stella. I draw a sad drawing of me in my sketchbook. I put teardrops all around me and some dead fish at my feet. After looking at this, I decide not to ask Mom to send this drawing with the email. It would be too dramatic. I think Stella's a little dramatic. Instead, I only put a few sad emojis at the end. After sending, I look, I start to make a list of things to ask my camp counselors. Here, they've got to be able to help me. My biggest question is, how do we stop using so much plastic? Chapter 16. The next day at camp, I walk through the front doors, determined. Before Mr. Kyle and Miss Susan start going over the schedule, I corner them. I have been reading, I begin. Terrific! About what? asks Miss Susan. I have been reading about how the oceans are filling up with plastic. 
I spent my afternoon being blue yesterday, but today, more than ever, I want to fix it. I curl my fist and pump it. Mr. Kyle and Miss Susan look at each other and then nod at me. Awesome, young lady. But I don't know how, I reply, looking at the ground. Hey there, don't worry. We'll give you some ideas, promise. Once all the campers have arrived and settled down, Mr. Kyle speaks. Today, we're going to work more on some enrichment toys, but I want to start the day talking about something else. I know many people are concerned about the oceans. Stella just came to me this morning and was feeling pretty blue about it. I, d I turn a little roja. I didn't know I'd be put on the spot. How many of you feel this way too? Everyone raises their hands. The roja fades away. I'm not alone. So I thought we could spend some time brainstorming ideas, little things we can do to make change. Mr. Kyle continues, specifically, I think, thinking of ways we can cut down on our plastic. Perk up. I'm all ears. Oh, we came up with a list like this, too. Hmm. Mr. Kyle writes on the blackboard, ways to cut down on plastic. So do you have any ideas? Logan raises his hand. You can carry a reusable water bottle. My dad got me this one. He raises up his bottle. It has sharks on it. That's a great idea. And remember, you don't just put, have to put water in it. You can put juice or coffee in it when you're older, responds Miss Susan. Anyone else? Kristen raises her hand. What about plastic straws? My mom says that we shouldn't use them anymore. I gulp. I love plastic straws. That's a great idea, replies Mr. Kyle, writing it down. And there are some great reusable straws, too. Some made of silicone and stainless steel. Whew. I feel relieved. I think of one. Could people use tote bags instead of plastic bags? My neighbor Linda always carries one around. Yes, and be sure to say no when you're offered a plastic bag, says Mr. Kyle, suggesting, um, writing my suggestion on the board next to the other two ideas. Does anyone else have an idea, says Miss Susan. The room goes silent. Everyone is scratching their head trying to come up with an idea. Miss Susan raises her hand. Can I suggest one? We all nod our heads. What about using plastic spoons, forks, and knives? Just bring your own with you and say no when someone at the restaurant offers you some. Fabulous, says Mr. Kyle, writing it down. Miss Susan says, this is a great start, and these are only four recommendations. If we all follow them, it can make a big impact. And if you spread the word, it could um, have an even bigger impact. I look at the list on the board. This is easy. I can do this, I think. Then, Mr. Kyle says, One last suggestion. There is an article called Planet or Plastic in National Geographic. Christian raises her hand. I know that article. I stopped reading it. It was too sad. I completely agree. It's heartbreaking, but its sole purpose is to inform. You know, sometimes you have to confront people with really hard information just to make them realize how important the cause is, says Mr. Kyle. I nod. It's so upsetting. But I know more about, sorry, but now that I know more about how we're harming the oceans, I have to save them. And I'm going to tell everyone about the plastic crisis. At least try, even if it's scary to talk to new people. This is too important. The best part of the article is at the end there's a pledge. By signing the pledge, you agree to stop using more plastic because you love the oceans more. I can do that. I'm so determined I speak aloud without thinking. I thought so, said Miss Susan, especially com um, coming from the future Sylvia Earl. One, carry a reusable water bottle. Two, say no to plastic straws. Three, carry a tote bag and say no to plastic bags. And four, say no to plastic cutlery. And that is the end of our time today. Make sure you take time to write on the notes. There will, um, just so you're ready to talk about these this tomorrow. Okay, have a great day. Bye.